All right, so uh, yeah, I'm going to show a lot, of, show off some of the stuff inside of uh, Chrome, the developer tools, um, and some of the more recent things that have, we've landed uh, focusing around performance. Uh, that said, I will just point out, as, as Steve said, Google I/O is this week, and there are still some features um, that we'll, we we will be debuting there. So I can't give you all the secrets today, but I'm going to give you as many as I can get away with. <clears throat> all right. Um, so we've been working on a, a bunch of stuff recently, and um, but I want to first kind of set the stage and break up kind of performance. Um, so first, there's kind of there's a page load page load performance. There we're working at network waterfall, the assets, image compression, having a non-blocking delivery, getting the critical path out first, um, and you know loading fonts responsibly, responsibly, those sorts of things. Then there's also the runtime performance. That's like uh, being jank free, keeping your interaction smooth and hot. Transitions and animations being 60 FPS, scrolling smoothly, um, keeping control of your memory leaks, minimizing the impact of garbage collection, and using smart APIs like Request Animation Frame to keep it good. Uh, in this talk, I'm going to focus a little bit more on the runtime side, but we're going to cover both. All right. Uh, the way I'm going to kick this off is with a bit of a demo. Um, and it's using this site here. This is kind of like a long, scrolly, infographic-y site. Um, so I'm just going to show you uh, what's going on. <clears throat> we scroll down. There's those circles that explode. You can kind of see there's, over on the left side, we got this kind of physics-y thing going on. And then these kind of flood fill ex explodey things. Uh, and kind of goes on. And then we get down here. And then that one blows up. And then we got more dots, because dots are cool. <laughs> All in all, I like this site. Um, but it's even cooler to look at while we profile it. So let's do that. I'm going to open up the DevTools, and we're going to switch over to the timeline. And now I'm just going to record it. I'll use Command-E, because I like keyboard shortcuts. And then I'll just scroll down the page. Uh-huh, yeah, that thing. And then we'll go past this pretty fast. And stuff at the bottom. Good, Command-E again. All right. <clears throat> So this is uh, the general look at the timeline. How many of you used the timeline before in doing kind of performance analysis? Good, yes, awesome. Um, <clears throat> all right, so what we're looking at, we got kind of a summary view up at the top. Um, on the right-hand side, we have kind of uh, totaling up a nice pie chart of what's in there so we can kind of see as we move along um, that we're being more script-heavy in this section. Um, in the back, we got a lot of like <clears throat> paint up in this area especially up here in the front. Um, yeah, a lot of pain. Uh, and then on the side are all the specific operations, um, how long they take, what's going on. Um, for those that are not too familiar with that kind of stuff, I just want to quickly review, not, not take too long. Um, this is generally the sort of uh, run loop that you're looking at as far as browser operations that are happening. Oftentimes, it'll kick off with some JavaScript doing something. Um, next up comes recalculate style. <clears throat> Uh, then layout, paint, compositing. Uh, in a little bit more detail, we calculate style. What this is basically doing is it, we look at all the styles that are in the page, all your style sheets, all your style tags, the inline styles, get all of them. Then we evaluate all the selectors that are currently in the DOM um, and match up you know, our style rules against what's in the DOM. And then we just uh, figure out what that computed style is for every single element there is. That's recalculate style. <clears throat> Um, Any time that you change, like a class name or something on an element, you have thus invalidated the styles beneath that. So the browser's going to have to do a little bit more work to recalculate that. <clears throat> layout is usually next. Um, layout is literally just laying out the geometry of the page. Elements go here, there, your floats, your display tables, this all has an effect on layout. <clears throat> um, in this screenshot, we're showing uh, this layout detail. There's a few more. Um, Specifics can give you how many nodes that needed layout, what the total tree size is of that layout, and the scope. Um, sometimes layouts can be scoped to just a subtree of the DOM. And uh, often, and in this case, it probably wanted it, because this is a 24 milliseconds is a pretty long time for a layout to happen, and you want to be able to constrain that. <clears throat> Paint is the other one that pops up a lot. Paint, uh, in this case, uh, we use green. Hurts a lot on low-end devices. It hurts a lot everywhere. Um, it's just you know figuring out what the exact pixels are and throwing them up on the screen. 
Uh, you can locate them with show paint racks um, and then try and debug what's going on with either continuous paint mode or the paint profiler. I'm going to get to those in a moment. But to come back, um, I want to take a closer look at the timeline that we recorded here. One of the best ways is to uh, use this little icon here. This is the frames mode. Uh, what this does is it changed the summary to look like this. Now, these vertical bars are basically, uh, their heights are associated with how long it took to construct each frame, you know, like the frames per second. The, the amount of time it took to, 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 to figure out what the pixels are that we're going to send up. The taller, the worse, right? The shorter means we can stay underneath 60 FPS, 30 FPS in this view right here. Like, like, it got pretty janky towards the end. We were busting out of our frame budget, whereas over here in the middle, it's pretty decent. That was that, that like boring section of the page. Um, but, but the other cool thing here is that we can kind of see a story, right? If we look at the front side of this, there's a lot of green. There's a lot of painting up in here. And then going over to the right a little bit, it's just dominated by JavaScript. So something's going on. And it's fun to take a little bit of a closer look. So when it was being dominated by JavaScript, um, it was in this section right here, which makes sense because there's all these physics-y things happening. Um, and this is actually being done with D3. And so usually, like let's say I want to understand what's really going on, I kind of zoom in. I see uh, basically in my operations every once in a while, my frames are taking 35 seconds, 45 seconds, 40 seconds, and they're mostly just this big animation frame. Um, in this case, I actually had a garbage collection too. But uh, in most cases, it's just uh, a function call coming in from request animation frame. Now at this point, I'm usually like, well, I should probably go figure out what's happening in JavaScript. So usually what happens is I'll go over to the JavaScript profile. I'll start that, command E, scroll a little bit, command E again. And this you know, is like the standard view of a JavaScript profile. <clears throat> But um, here we see, you know, like FI is our most expensive thing. Garbage collection is pretty active. Set attributes going on. But one of the things that this doesn't tell you the story of is kind of like how this worked over time. And to do that, we introduced something a little bit, a little bit ago called the flame chart. You can access it by clicking this arrow right here and going to flame chart. How many have worked with this before? Good, cool, awesome. So <clears throat> what we're looking at this is just a visual representation of what was in that JavaScript profile. And so I can, I can navigate it the same way that I navigated the timeline. And so you can see across the top, it's just you know, frames of information are being computed, and we're really active uh, in the JavaScript thread just doing work. And when I zoom in to one of these um, flames, really, we can see what's happening. And not only just like what are the most expensive functions, but Beyond that, what is like the narrative of, of how the functions got called and the sequence and such? So it looks like here we started off with kind of some pub sub going on. Um, we moved over here and did a little bit more work. But then most of our uh, frame, we are inside LT. That was up at the top of our heavy profile. And if I zoom in a little bit more, uh, we are visiting a lot of nodes and doing a lot of things, and it took a long time. And that's basically what's going on. <clears throat> but so this is good. Like, I got a pretty good idea of what's going on. <clears throat> but this here is like very heavy JavaScript. Um, and what I had to do was I had to go over and like forget about everything that I learned in timeline because I wanted to focus on the JavaScript. We thought about this and we thought, well, <clears throat> over here we kind of have a visual representation of what's happening. Over here we do too. Why don't we figure out a nice way that we can blend that story together? So the first thing that we did was we decided that we could take uh, this timeline data and represent it similarly in a flame chart. <clears throat> so that goes uh, right here. You can hit, this is a new experiment, but you can try it out, and it'll look something like this. So now you can zoom in, and we're having the same sorts of information, like, um, let me see if I can get a good one. Uh, as um, same sort of information as like the typical uh, timeline view, but represented more in this kind of flame chart. 
And this is really nice, but what I want to show you right now is actually the combination of the JavaScript profiling happening at the same time. So I'm going to turn on Capture Stacks. Um, and I'm going to turn on Capture Stacks and then do the same uh, timeline recording as I move the page uh, around this action. So I'm going to hit record. There we go. Now we're looking at something a little bit different. Now we see that the animation frame fired and a lot more stuff is happening. So let me zero in on something here. You can just drag this uh, view down here, by the way. It helps a lot. So now I not only see these are all the JavaScript functions as they're being called. Um, we can see what function, what file they're coming in from lopsided, the stack. These stacks, uh, the, the y-axis is just call stack. So height is not necessarily a bad thing. Width is what is time duration. So width is usually uh, what you're targeting. But the nice thing here is that we're seeing JavaScript execution, but we're also seeing how that ties back to the other operations that the browser is doing. So as this came down, it looked like we're in this uh, looks generally like um, uh, jQuery. Come down into this anonymous function, and it gets a page y offset. That page y offset caused a recalculate style, and then we had a layout directly after that. So here we get that full picture of um, from the browser into the JavaScript engine and back to its causes, uh, back to the operations in the browser. So this is a really nice way of kind of seeing the complete picture. <clears throat> All right. Um, oh, thanks. <laughs> um, I'm going to show another example of, of something kind of new in the in the um, in the dev tools. This is actually a, uh, a little interactive story from the New York Times not so long ago. And as you scroll down the page at the top, these guys kind of move out of the way. It's cool. And there's other stuff. But I, I like this a lot. But I was looking at this, and I, and I saw these guys. And, uh, and I felt like it's not moving. Like, it's kind of smooth, but it could be more smooth. And whenever I see that on a web page, I was just like, I open up the dev tools. And I was like, what can we do? It must be smooth. All right. But to, like, let me, let me help visualize why this is not as good as it could be. All right, I'll turn off Capture Stacks. We'll come back down and I'm gonna record. So record, scroll down. Oh yeah. Look at that. This is a, uh, I'll do that again, it's better in frames view. Come down, nothing, nothing. Paint, 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 paint. All this stuff, right? So we have a bunch of paint records. Um, we're painting, looks like, you know, uh, the entire screen, um, that size, and it's taking uh, a good 10 milliseconds per frame, sometimes more. So what's happening? Uh, I'm going to switch over to the right-hand side so that we can open up the rendering uh, tool set. If you hit escape um, inside of a timeline, inside of the dev tools, it's usually quick access to the console, um, but... You can also access these rendering tools in there. And I use two in particular all the time. It's a show paint rectangles and show composited layer borders. I usually use them in combination. So now when I scroll down, you can see right as soon as those guys start moving, the entire area flashes green. That is, and that is exactly where our paints are happening. It's in this section. So if I just select in here to figure out what exactly this is, <coughs> It looks like, if you watch this, we are just manipulating the top and transform of this div right here containing the guy um, as we scroll. Now, does anyone want to venture a guess what could be more efficient about this, this transition right here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, good. Translate, right? Who's that? You? Yeah, that was really good. Um, okay, yeah, translate. Um, Basically, uh, there's a great article about this called High Performance Animations. And this is something that's pretty much consistent across all browsers. Trying to animate something like top is going to cause stuff like this. Um, the best things that you can ever animate is transform and opacity. So try and stick your, your animations and transitions to solely those properties. <clears throat> now, so I see this, and I know that this could be better. So I went ahead, and I just like 
took the, uh, the parallax, parallax library that they're using and then it's adapted it. So I said, you know, let's not animate the top. We'll just do the transform on its own. And so that version is right, uh, right over here. And um, as I scroll down, we have, ooh, ah, oh, 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 yeah, that's nice. Ah, oh, that's good. <clears throat> Let me, for anyone that can't feel the difference between uh, this and that, I'm just going to, like, record a timeline so it's all fair. You can see the difference. <clears throat> okay, we'll turn off the paint wrecks for now. Come into timeline. All right. You, you. Timeline before. Uh-huh, that stuff. Timeline after. Oh, where is it? Where is it? I don't see you. Where are you at, B? That's right, yeah. That's pretty tight. So basically, um, the work is, uh, we tiny, do a tiny bit of recalculate style, but all the work is done on the GPU. We do not need to re repaint and rasterize the entire view again. And so, like, <clears throat> this is is barely hitting 60 FPS on my machine. On a, on a slower machine, it would have a real problem. This version is not going to have a problem anywhere, right? It's super fast. All right, cool. Um, all right, so here's kind of a cheat sheet for uh, dealing with the timeline and, and, and figuring out what, you sh what action you should take. You spend a lot of time in JavaScript. You want to run a JavaScript profile. You can also use kind of the merged view of profile in timeline that I just showed. You spend a lot of time in layout, and it's usually like you're in a layout thrashing situation. Um, you have JavaScript that is asking for properties like offset width too much. Um, figure out what the story is there. <clears throat> Spend a lot of time in paint. You gotta find them first. So like turn on paint rex, see what is being repainted. Sometimes it's the entire screen because you got something going on. You might have to promote layers out of paint storms. It's complicated. Um, and uh, you can figure out what exactly is going on with um, continuous paint mode or the paint profiler. Now, um, I want to show this paint profiler that I mentioned. This is um, a pretty new feature that, um, that we've been working on, and it's not, it's not totally there yet, but I figure it's worth showing to you guys already. <clears throat> so in this case, remember when I was up here and I ran a timeline, and we look at this section, and we are just doing a whole lot of painting, right? I zoom in on, on, on one of the frames, and we are painting for about 12, 12 milliseconds a frame. Now, what's going on? <clears throat> if I turn on show paint rects, you can see it's generally, yeah, this big orange circular thing. As it's growing, it's kind of doing a lot of work, right? So I wanted to get a better understanding of why exactly that is taking such a long time to paint. <clears throat> so oh, we're going to move over to a new experimental panel called Layers Panel. And here, I see the layer representation, the GPU layer representation of my page. And it's something that I can zoom in on and kind of move around. It is 3D and stuff. That's cool. But um, I want to select this. So here's a layer. Um, <clears throat> and we can actually see what it is. I can right click and reveal over in the DOM panel. This is my SVG, right? And um, we can see actually the paint count too, in addition to some other details. So as I move up and down, sorry, there we go. As I move up and down, it's being repainted and this paint count is increasing. But if I want to figure out what exactly is making this paint for so long, I'm going to do something where I take this layer and right now what we do is we double click it. So what the browser just did is it re-rendered that layer. And now that it's re-rendered, we got a few new things to look at. I'm going to come back out, reset my view, and zoom back in. All right, cool. Now down at the bottom, these are all the paint records that Skia, which is the rasterization layer in Chromium, uh, is handling. And then on the right-hand side, we have a histogram of all the paint costs associated with that. What we can actually do is we can interact with this. We can select these over here and kind of drag this slider out to the right. And we can see these, this paint operation happening uh, bit by bit and associate what all the, uh, the operations are at the skia level <clears throat> with uh, the specific costs because height is, is time. Basically, the story that this tells us 
is that we're essentially just painting circles, right? And it's and the interesting thing is here, towards the end, it's very hard to see, but there's these tiny little circles, um, these tiny empty circles. And but you can see that the cost to paint them is pretty much the same to to paint the uh, the colored in circles. So what this tells us is that like the fill on the circle is not at all expensive. It's just a matter of the quantity of how many we're doing. So if that's something we were optimizing, we would just cut it down depending on what hardware we're on. All right. <clears throat> now um, I want to show uh, another demo, but to do that. We've been on the desktop so much, we might as well go to my phone. So I'm going to come over. Let's see. Uh, we're going to be here. Yeah. <clears throat> now, we're going to do a little bit of remote debugging. I'm going to open up the DevTools. And I want you to just keep watch up here because cause I like this thing. Yeah, cool. I plug in my phone. And as soon as I have it up, oh, yeah, nice. We have a little device connected. So that's cool. One device found. I click that. <clears throat> we come over here. We see that my Nexus 5 is connected. We have a uh, Chrome Dev Channel up on my Nexus 5. And I want to take this page that I'm currently looking at and bring it up on my phone right now. So I'm just going to tap that. All right. So it's just loaded up the phone here on uh, well, the page on my phone. And we have a remote debugging session set up already. So in addition to just having the dev tools for my phone, we have this live view of my phone. So as I scroll on my phone, we're seeing the screen up there, which is really nice. But in addition to that, it's interactable. So I can just click in here on my desktop and type on my keyboard. And it saves a lot of time versus you know dealing with my phone screen again. All right. But, um, I want to do a little bit of profiling. And what I want to do is actually um, some tracing. Uh, has anyone heard of about tracing? Used a tool like this? Yeah. It's, it's like, this guy's legit right there. Uh, about tracing is, is rad, but it's like it is the ground truth of every single thing that's happening inside of Chrome. Uh, it is a lot of data. So like here I'm just zoomed in on like, you know, a second worth of stuff. Um, but there's a lot to, to catch up on inside of tracing. <clears throat> but right now, it's, it's operated as kind of a separate tool. And we want to be able to make sure that this information is just as accessible to you if you need to go that deep. And on mobile, it's been particularly challenging because you need to go through ADB and do a lot of command line work. It's no fun. All right. So now, <clears throat> I actually want to do some tracing um, while I'm remote debugging. I'm going to come over to Timeline. And I'm looking for a checkbox. It's not there, so let's go turn that on. <clears throat> a lot of the stuff I'm showing today are experiments in DevTools. Um, ex the DevTools experiments live in here. Let's see, I'm trying a lot of them out. Um, we're going to turn on timeline tracing mode, and I'm just going to refresh these DevTools. All right, cool. So now I'm going to capture tracing and hit record, and then I'm just going to tap on the first link and let that load. Nice. All right. So what's happening now is we're actually c collecting all of those trace events that, are ha that were instrumented inside of Chrome um, and taking a look. All right. <clears throat> now we have a kind of a different view of what's going on. We're going to scroll down to the bottom. Um, here's some, there's some interesting stuff. Uh, this is um, <clears throat> uh, things like... Um, touching the screen are intercepted at the compositor level, and we can actually see that happen um, here. And then we can see the, the relationship between the compositor thread, the render thread, and all sorts of other threads. Um, what this allows us to do is see a really comprehensive story. So this here, we're parsing the HTML of the page. We actually spawn off a background parser here. Um, and you can actually see some nice stuff like... Uh, <coughs> This right here, we're evaluating uh, a script. This is actually some Prettify JavaScript. We evaluate that, and when we go into that, we actually go into a parse step where we parse it. 
then we compile it, V8 compiles it, and then we execute it. So we see that layer of detail. So if that's something that you're doing, you're doing some optimization kind of for some critical path stuff or doing game development, uh, this is going to save a lot of time, especially when you're working on a phone. All right. <clears throat> um, one other thing that I wanted to show, um, we're going to take this URL, and I'm just going to pop it right in here so that I can open this up on my phone. It's like a phone in a phone. I like it. All right. Uh, so we're going to record again. And uh, I'm going to record and just hit toggle view. And we get that nice kind of effect. I like this. It's cool. Um, there are a few things that are happening here. Um, but we can actually, one of the nice things, we can see what the layer tree is um, at all states. So here, we're actually capturing the layer tree at every single frame of the animation. So I can see when I started that animation, the layer tree looked something like this, kind of the phone before it exploded. And then I'm going to go over towards the end of the animation, come down. All these names are crazy and not comprehensible. So it's not user friendly. Uh, I just want to point that out. Um, layer tree host impl is where <laughs> you'll find this. Uh, but uh, you can see the layer tree at that point. So we can capture the layer tree over the course of the animation. All right, rock and roll. <clears throat> um, last thing I wanted to show real quick uh, was a few things inside of WebPageTest. Um, <clears throat> WebPageTest does have a few nice things when it comes to Chrome. So uh, if you're looking at Chrome, head on over to this Chrome tab, and I would encourage you to capture the DevTools timeline. You can also capture the Chrome Chase, which is what we were just looking at, and the network log. But I like the DevTools timeline because one view that it gives you you're looking here, this is like, this is the velocity site. I took a look. Um, so, you know, the, the waterfall that it shows you tells you everything that's happening at the network layer. Um, but down here in the CPU utilization and the browser main thread, like, there's stuff happening, but you don't understand what it is. Um, with that checkbox checked, uh, you can get a main thread processing breakdown, which just summarizes, oh, yeah, we were compositing layers, we were running JavaScript, we were painting, we were layouting. Um, telling you the whole story of what actually was happening inside the browser when the page was loading. Um, and in addition to that, you can also just view what the timeline of, of the page looked like as it loaded. So here's just, DevTools is just a web app, and it just loads in the timeline data so you can take a better look. All right. <clears throat> um, the last thing I'll point out, web page test, fantastic. This happened um, just a few months ago. Uh, drop down... Uh, in Dulles, because that's the spot. And you can check out all these actual real mobile devices running both Chrome and Chrome Beta. Um, that gives you a lot of great insight uh, as to how the performance is happening on actual devices. Um, so this is just a shot of the devices, real, plugged in over in Virginia. I um, encourage you to check that out, because it's fantastic. And thank you guys very much. Uh, we have time for like a few questions. If you got any? Yeah, yeah. So the question is um, uh, Does the tracing mode inside of the DevTools timeline show uh, the exact same data that's available um, in the full about tracing UI? Uh, the answer is yes. Um, and, and we're looking at ways to kind of um, improve the rendering. Uh, right now, the UI of about tracing is a little bit sharper. Um, things like the frame viewer and advanced features are stronger over there. Um, but yeah, the full. Story is all the data is available there. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all the processes are, are being shown. Yep, for real. Yeah. Sir. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> question was um, in the network panel. You can often you can you know, save out as a har all the data. Uh, with the timeline, you can do the same thing. So save timeline data. This will just save a big, huge JSON file. Um, and then you can just throw that to anyone else. Um, and they can just load it right in. And it works just like this. It's great. Cool. All right, thank you guys very much. Appreciate it. <clears throat>